what's up guys did you know that based on the length thickness texture and porosity of your hair the drying time using a hair dryer can vary between 5 to 45 minutes of course this estimate will be influenced by the environment's humidity and temperature and the power of the hair dryer I'm no hair dryer expert and if you look closely I don't even need one as lately I've been using this bald haircut. This did not stop me from looking into the Dyson supersonic hair dryer for my wife with several models with prices ranging from $299 for the model with a single accessory to $569 for the latest model I went for the supersonic with multiple accessories my wife has been using more affordable hair dryers to put it mildly that are loud, inefficient and have no special accessories to reduce drying time also, overheating the hair strands can cause loss of elasticity and other problems, so I looked into more premium alternatives. As this was a couple of years ago, the cheaper ripoffs were scarce, or at least not so popular, but the latest competition might have caught up in the meantime. From my point of view, there are three important challenges that a hairdryer must overcome to be an efficient tool. Reduce the heat damage to your hair, operate at a noise level as low as possible and be easy to use. Before diving into these challenges, we must first take a look at the contents of the package. Opening the cardboard box with this interesting product view on top reveals the dryer's slick design and long power cord. This version arrived with five attachments. A styling concentrator with a wider and thinner shape for a more precise styling. A large diffuser that will help define curls and reduce frizz. A gentle air attachment for gentle drying of fine hair and delicate scalps. A smoothing nozzle for adding volume and creating a frizzless natural look. A flyaway attachment for a smooth finish with the flyaways hidden using the Quanda effect and a small quick start guide. All these attachments are magnetic so finding the right one based on your hair type or styling needs is easy. Additionally, they can rotate 360 degrees allowing their position to be easily adjustable during use. The Dyson Supersonic uses a DC motor that spins at up to 110,000 RPM to create a powerful airflow that reduces static in the air with the help of charged ion particles. While the motor is acoustically tuned to produce an inaudible frequency, there is a high pitched sound that can be heard while using the hair dryer. The Dyson Supersonic has four precise air temperature settings that can be changed using three buttons. One for controlling the heat level, another for controlling the three airfoil speeds, and the third one to enable a cold shot by deactivating the heating element. Extreme heat levels are mitigated by measuring the temperature over 40 times a second, and the heating element is controlled with precision using PVM. With a well-sized handle, the supersonic feels good in your hand and while the outside is mostly plastic, it has 410 grams without the cable. Besides its innovative design features, another characteristic that helps the Dyson Supersonic stand out from the other hair dryers is the presence and location of the air filter. You can easily clean it by removing the filter cage. With most of the specs of the Dyson Supersonic out of the way, 
we can now look into some tests to see its performance and how it tackles the challenges I mentioned earlier. To get a feel for the temperatures these devices could reach while in operation, I use a thermal imaging camera. With the Dyson Supersonic on the highest setting, readings show a maximum temperature of around 54 degrees Celsius. In comparison, the more affordable hairdryer generated near the nozzle temperatures of around 176 degrees. This reveals that the Dyson hairdryer operates at temperatures well below any dangerous values for your hair. To compare the noise levels of the two devices, I used a sound meter phone app. Values for both hair dryers were similar, with a maximum average of around 69 decibels. This is higher than 60 decibels, the sound intensity of a louder conversation, but at a distance of 30 to 40 centimeters away, it should not cause hearing problems with frequent use. Proper airflow is important in reducing the drying time. So I compared the air velocities produced by the two devices with an anemometer. This could provide, besides the air velocity levels, a secondary measurement of the air temperature blown at your scalp. The Dyson Supersonic produced an air velocity of 11.3 meters per second. At the same time, the more affordable hair dryer delivered an air velocity of 6.6 .6 meters per second at a temperature above 50 degrees Celsius. This comparison confirms the fact that the Dyson Supersonic produces a much stronger airflow at a temperature level that is more gentle with your hair. During these tests, the power consumption of the Dyson Supersonic was between around 500 and 1400 watts, depending on the airflow speed and heat level. The inexpensive hairdryer, on the other hand, required between 700 and 1400 watts of power. Having all these measurements side by side, you could still argue if the high price of the Dyson Supersonic is justified, and in my opinion, it is. Not only that, but you can choose from more affordable options if you are willing to part with few of the accessories. With its compact size, long power cable and magnetic accessories, using the Dyson Supersonic is a pleasant experience. Let me know in the comment section if you think the Dyson Supersonic is worth its premium price. And until next time, don't forget to check out our store crayonroshu.com. Take care.